Hello everyone and welcome to the session of understanding manual mode and stops. I'm Rohan and here I have with me Abhishek, my colleague from the Nikon India technical team. Hi Abhishek. Hello Rohan. So Abhishek here we are today to help our viewers understand manual mode and how to shoot in stops. How do you think we can demonstrate this for them in an easily understandable way? Rohan, see, first of all, I would like to mention to all our viewers that most of them who have just bought their DSLR are either shooting in auto mode or P mode. Correct. We just want them to get out of these modes and try a few more options because these modes kind of disable most of the options and features in your camera. So you have less control over your images. Wherein shooting in manual mode give you lot many control over your image in terms of setting the right exposures. And there are some more features that can be you know adjusted in manual mode, which probably auto mode does not uh, deliver. First of all, it is very important to understand what are stops. Yes, Abhishek, because I'm sure each one of us has gone through that, you know, initial dilemma of and confusion about stops. Right. Because anybody who's starting photography or is new to you know, DSLR photography will obviously have this little uh, apprehension about stops right. and understanding how they work. Yeah. So our intention here is uh, once you understand stops, it becomes very easy for anybody who has a DSLR to shoot in manual mode. So what we'll be doing is right now we'll conduct a small demonstration and through that demonstration we'll try and explain how uh, what are stops and then we'll jump on to how to shoot in manual mode. So shall we execute the demonstration? Yes Abhishek, let's go ahead. Let's go. So to illustrate how to use stops, we have this beautiful painting as a prop. We have a D810 camera mounted with a 2470 lens. And uh, my colleague Abhishek here will help us understand how we can use stops to improve our photography. So Rowan, uh, to explain stops, it is very uh, important to understand something which is visible in the viewfinder. And there on the screen, what we have done is we have hooked D810 with the LCD screen there so that our viewers can get a very clear view of what we are doing inside the camera. Now you can see the meter there, which we also call the meter scale with plus and minus sign on it and zero right on the center. Correct. So right now, as per the prevailing lighting condition, we have set our camera right with one by 15th uh, second of uh, shutter speed and f3.5 as aperture. There are two ways to understand stops. One, when aperture is on priority, that is you want shallow depth of field or you want greater depth of field. Second is when you want to freeze motion, you need to play around with shutter speed or you want to show motion, you need to play around with shutter speed. So that is another way of understanding stops. So let's take the first case when an aperture is on priority and when you want to play around with the depth of field. So right now, as per the lighting condition, the aperture that we have set is f3.5. Let's say we want little more depth in our shot, so we increase the f number, say 5. Okay. Now when we do that and we fix the shutter speed and the shutter speed remains the same at 1 by 15th of a second. What you see in the meter scale is, it's going towards the negative side. Yes, it has moved a little towards exactly. the negative. So whenever the camera is either going one stop above or one stop towards the negative, what is actually happening is, if we say that the camera is overexposing one stop, it is actually allowing double the light to enter the camera. Twice the light, Twice is the light the to camera. enter right. the camera. And each time we bring the stop down or towards the negative side, it halves the light that enters the camera. So it is just easier this way for you know everyone to remember and to use when they're actually practically right. taking pictures. Why don't we demonstrate uh, taking a few pictures, Abhishek, and uh, you know for our viewers so that subject becomes a little more clearer for their understanding. So what we are doing right here is uh, right now we are focusing on this subject and as you can see, it's one stop underexpose. So let's take the image and see how it comes. So this is what you get. Technically, this is one stop underexposed. So to get it right, what we need to do is, we need to bring the exposure meter back to zero. It's not very easy to understand stops. So you can remember it in this way that when you rotate the dial, three clicks means one full stop. One click means third stop. So what I'll do is, I'll rotate the dial three stops because you can see it's one full stop. So I'll have to rotate the dial three times to bring it back to zero. So I'll widen the aperture, that is I'll lower down the F number and this is two-thirds stop, one-third stop and one full stop. One full stop. 
Now, what if you want to stick to a particular aperture, say f5? So, like f5 is there, and you want to stick to f5 because you want, say, certain amount of depth in your shot. And to do that, you have two legs of exposure to get it right, to bring the exposure back to zero. One is one is adjusting the shutter speed. Another is ISO. ISO we will take on later. Let's see how you can do is by altering the shutter speed. So I'll rotate it. One third stop, two third, and one full stop. So at one by eighth of a second, at f5, it is giving me a proper exposure. Let's say now we want to increase the shutter speed to one by fiftieth of a second, and we have kept f value of f4. Now at this particular camera setting and in the prevailing lighting condition, camera is giving us two stops underexposed. So to, how to correct that? In order to do that, the leg that you need to adjust in the exposure triangle is aperture. So let's widen up the aperture first and see how much light our camera can gather. So since this is 2470mm lens, the widest aperture it can support is 2.8. So I'll just drop down the f number to 2.8 and still you can see at 1 by 50th of a second and f 2.8 it's giving me one stop underexposed now to correct that we have another and the last leg of exposure triangle which is called iso iso also plays a very vital role in getting the right exposure so what we need to do is we need to change the iso approximately three times so right now it's 100 so we'll change it one click, that is one by 125, which is giving us two third stops, then one third stop at 160 and 200. That's one full stop. One full stop. So 100 to 200 is one full stop when it comes to ISO. So by changing the ISO and keeping the shutter speed steady without changing the shutter speed and by widening up the aperture to 2.8, we can get the exposure right, bang on to zero. So just to rephrase for all our viewers, uh, whatever Euro parameter of the exposure triangle is on priority, keeping that constant, we have the other two to manage or to make our exposure right as per the prevailing or you know whichever lighting conditions our viewers will be while they're shooting in a more real life scenario. Exactly. So let's take an image in this particular setting and see how it comes. So technically this is what we call proper exposure and I hope you must have understood how stops work. Similarly what we explained to you was mainly towards underexposed image. The same thing can be impl implemented when you talk about one stop over or two stop over exposed images. So I'm sure each one of us has understood how to use stops like Abhishek said. You do not really have to remember what shutter speed, what aperture or what ISO you were at. It's just while rotating the dial each time you hear a click each click increases or decreases the exposure by one third a stop. One click, one third stop, second click, two thirds, and three clicks make it one stop. So anytime anybody tells you that you have to, you know, go increase it by a stop or decrease the exposure by a stop, all you have to remember is move the dial three times. So I'm sure each one of us has got the concept of stops. Now to understand this better and taking it one step forward, let's go and understand how to shoot in manual modes. Now you understood how stops work, let us demonstrate how you can shoot in manual mode considering all the stops in mind. To do that, we have Tridisha with us and she'll be helping us in demonstrating how to shoot in manual mode. And Rohan will of course take the pictures in various exposure settings. So Rohan, let us take one shot with one full stop underexposed and see the outcome how it comes. As you can see, the whole situation is brightly lit. Tridisha is wearing white dress and we have a background which is equally white. So this whole environment is pretty bright for the camera. Yes, white anyways as a color reflects back a lot of light towards exactly. the camera. Exactly. So right now uh, our camera is set as per the lighting condition and uh, now Rohan is going to take one image with one full stop underexposed. Okay. So here... Three clicks like we said in our... Yeah, three clicks. That means we are going one stop underexposed wherein the shutter speed is 1 by 125 and f 2.8. So let's see the result. Yes. So this shot. So as you can see from the image, it's uh, one full stop underexposed, and uh, white is almost appearing like grey. 
Yes, because see, uh, the cameras are anyways tuned to look for 18% grey, right. as that's how the camera meter works. So, as uh, we clicked one stop under, we saw that the picture is slightly underexposed. Now, let us try what happens if we take an overexposed picture. Right. So, again. So, Rowan is slowing down the shutter speed to do that, and we are now one full stop overexposed with the shutter speed of 1 by 30th of second. So let's try a shot and see how uh, what are the results. Now, as you can see from the image, details from the brighter section of the image, especially the dress Tradisha is wearing, the details are all gone and washed out and skin is reflecting a lot of light and uh, this is what we technically call an overexposed shot. Now, to correct it, what we need to do is remember those three clicks. So, as the shot is one stop overexposed, now again we'll alter the shutter speed and bring the meter back to zero to get technically well exposed shot. So, let's take a shot in this lighting condition. Can we even have good details in the hair, uh, you know, even in the dress that Tradisha is wearing? When you bring down the meter to zero on the scale, that is what, according to the prevailing lighting, is the correct exposure. So that pretty much sums it up how we can use stops. So let's go ahead and talk a little more about exposure metering in our next section. Exactly. Exposure metering is one step ahead. When you are shooting in manual mode, it is very important to understand exposure metering and that you will be seeing in our next episode. Yes, Ron. Now I think our DSLR users will be much more confident in using manual mode to have greater control over their images and will get out of that auto mode. And uh, I think uh, these tips were, were really valuable. And uh, this is it for this episode. And we'll be back with much more exciting episode. Until next time, these are your Nikon buddies, Abhishek and Rohan signing off.